Hi, I'm Edison Tan from PE Micro, and today we will be discussing production programming for NXP's I.MX RT processors. This is a follow up video to our previous I.MX RT Secure Boot video, which we do recommend watching first as it explains many of the concepts that will be mentioned in this video. Developers are facing new programming challenges as they enable Secure Boot to protect their I.MX RT devices. In this video, We'll give a demo of how to use PE Micro's Cyclone programmers to secure both your product and your production programming environment. Let's get started. We start by opening the Cyclone image creation utility. And after selecting our processor, the next step is to link in a secure boot utility project. Since we don't have a project created yet, we're going to click on this button here which will ask us where do we want to save our new project. Once we do that, it'll launch the P Micro Secure Boot Utility. And let's take a closer look at the different options here. On the left-hand side of the utility, we can see all of the user inputs that we're going to need to specify. And we'll go through each of those one by one. On the right side is the real-time feedback. This is going to give us useful information as we change the different options, what effect each option will have. And we'll go through each of these tabs here to see what information it's going to provide as we change the different options on the left-hand side. So to start, we have our processor selected here. And then the next step is to create the PE key file. This is a collection file that will hold our signing certificates, our AES keys, and our secure JTAG passwords. Normally, we would browse to a previously created collection, but since we are doing this for the first time, we're going to click on this button here to generate a new PE key file. The first question it'll ask us is, where are the signing certificates coming from? In this demo, we'll let the utility generate brand new certificates for us. But if you do have previously generated certificates, you can use one of the other two options to import those certificates in. So here we're going to save our new PE key file to the hard drive so that we can reference it later. Typically, this process is done once. We would create one PE key file initially and then add more AES keys and more passwords to it over time as we have more products that are using IMXRT processors. Next, we want to specify the user application. We'll select a LED Blinky example that we compiled in MCU Expresso. Next, we choose whether we want a signed boot image or a signed and encrypted boot image. We'll pick the signed and encrypted here. The OTFAD is the acronym for the encryption module on the IMXRT 1011. So we can see some feedback in the summary as we change that boot image type. So it'll give us a quick description of what the OTFAD is. And we can start to see some of the other tabs filling in as well. This is the fuse output, so we can see that there's some fuses being written here related to the image type that we just selected. For the signing certificate, we have uh, four to choose from. The utility generated four certificates for us. And we'll leave it at the default, which is the first signing certificate. For encrypted boot, we do need an encrypted boot key. And we can create one here. This will be added to the PE key file that we just generated. And one thing we can do is give this key a useful name that we can reference later. And we'll let the utility generate a random key value for us. So now we can pick that key. And just to give a example of multiple products, we could have a product B key here. And we'll be able to select between the two keys. So we'll leave it at product A key for now. 
Uh, you can see that it added the SWGP2 fuse here. This is the fuse that holds the encrypted boot key. So if we were to change this key selection, we can see the values getting reflected in the fuse list. Next, we want to pick between encrypting just the use application range or specifying a custom set of address ranges to encrypt. Uh, we're OK with just the default setting here, where we're just encrypting the user application space. The flash configuration block is the section in the boot image that tells the processor which flash are you booting from, what's the frequency of the flash, and settings like that. For us, our user application does have this block in it. So we'll pick the third option, which is to preserve that block. Don't change it, just keep it intact. If you have a situation where your user application doesn't have that block, one of the other options will let you specify the settings needed by the utility for it to form that block. Next, we have the security options down here. And before we set any of those, let's open the security overview tab here, which, as we can see, since we did pick an encrypted boot image, we do have some protections in place, but there are quite a number of outstanding vulnerabilities right now. So we're going to address those by going through these options down here. The first thing we want to do is change the security configuration from open to closed. A closed processor will only boot code that has a valid signature. And since that's the fundamental basis of secure boot, we're definitely going to want that setting as closed. For the locking of the fuses, we'll change that to yes. That'll prevent anyone from reading or writing the sensitive security fuses once we've programmed the board. For the JTAG status, we're going to want to do something to stop attackers from simply going into debug on our product. So we'll pick the secure JTAG option, which means that you need a password in order to enable debug mode. Similarly to the keys, we can specify a password here, which will be saved into the PE key file that we generated before. So now we can see that the security vulnerabilities are all addressed, and we can now have some confidence that our product is going to be secure before we ship to customers. So now we're ready to generate the boot image. We'll click that here, and it'll go through a number of steps in order to generate the flash and the eFuse files that will be used by the Cyclone Image Creation Utility afterwards. So here, everything is successful. So we're ready to save our project and close it, which will come back to the Cyclone Image Creation Utility. So now we're back in the Cyclone Image Creation Utility. And as we can see, the programming sequence has been filled in for us. The first half is the programming of the flash, and the second half is the programming of the e-fuses. We can also see that the secure JTAG section here has also been configured with the password that we just created. And this is going to be important for us if we ever want to reprogram a board. Since we enabled secure JTAG, we won't be able to re-enter debug mode unless we provide the password that we just programmed in. Down here, we have the image encryption settings. And this is important because we do want to generate encrypted SAP files. This is going to prevent anyone from seeing the AES keys or the secure JTAG passwords, since only the Cyclone is going to be able to decrypt the SAP file that we're going to generate. Uh, so we'll create a new encryption key here. And we'll give it a, a name. And once we do that, we're ready to generate our encrypted SAP file that's done with these buttons down here. And what's going to happen is every time we do generate the SAP file, the flash and the eFuse outputs here will automatically get regenerated. The secure boot utility will be launched, 
to regenerate these files and that's controlled by this checkbox up here to auto build those binaries. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll create the ESAP file here and as we can see there's already a couple that I've generated so I'll overwrite one of the ones that I have. And this is the pop-ups that invoke the secure boot utility to regenerate the two files that I just mentioned. And we have a success so now we have a ESAP file. We can load that onto the Cyclone and we're ready for production programming. Thank you so much for watching. For more information on Secure Boot and i.mxrt programming, please visit us at pemicro.com.